Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the next film in the MCU called The Marvels. This movie stars, of course, Brie Larson, Tayona Paris, and Iman Vellani. And it takes these three characters that we know and love from the MCU, or hate and hate even more depending on who you are, and it smashes them all together in this fun space adventure that's I actually had a lot of fun with this movie. And if you're one of those people, because, you know, I work in a movie theater, and there was this guy that saw the poster hanging on the wall and said, this movie is guaranteed to be garbage before storming out of the theater. If you're one of those people... Just don't watch the movie and just do something else that makes you happy. Watch something else that makes you happy. And if you haven't seen this movie, I don't think you can really form an opinion about it because, well, you haven't seen the movie. So for those of you who have seen the movie, we're going to be talking about spoilers for this film. And if you did enjoy that first film, I do think that you will have a lot of fun for this movie. So go watch this movie, come back, and let's talk about it. So what is this film about? Well, essentially, it follows our three leads. We have Captain Marvel, Captain Rambo, and Miss Marvel. And their powers are essentially entangled together, causing them to swap places every single time they try to use their abilities but there's also the villainous plot thread of this movie of course which follows this leader of the Kree who's essentially trying to gather all these natural resources to save Hala because their planet is essentially dying they've been in this civil war for the past 30 years ever since Captain Marvel actually went over to them and destroyed the supreme intelligence for good causing them to kind of go down this spiraling path of civil wars and all this death and all this destruction causing them to be even more dangerous than they were before and now this person that has been wronged by Captain Marvel is going around stealing resources from all the planets that Captain Marvel knows and loves. And so none of that was really in the marketing for this film. This movie really did market itself as a crossover between WandaVision, Captain Marvel, and Miss Marvel. And that's easily what works best about this film. I think them having their powers entangled together causes a lot of really fun action sequences, a lot of inventive action sequences as well, with the direction from Nia DaCosta being extremely entertaining through all of these sequences in this movie, causing them to swap back and forth a fun montage in the middle of the movie and an excellent opening action sequence of them first discovering that their powers are entangled together. And, you know, I think my biggest flaw with that first Captain Marvel film, or one of my biggest flaws with that first Captain Marvel film, is that it felt very much like it was Marvel on autopilot with the action and with the direction of that movie. It didn't feel like it was somebody's singular vision. But I think the action sequences in this movie really do work because of Nia DaCosta's singular direction and because of her vision in these action sequences, because of the fun camera moves and the inventive way they can tell the story through these beats of action i think the hits really do land i think the sound design really does work and i think the editing specifically in all these sequences make it really stand out above some other action sequences and especially the first captain marvel movie but even some great action sequences in more recent movies like am and the wasp quantumania but between the excellent chemistry of these three leads and the genuinely great action sequences throughout the entirety of this film i'm having a hard time seeing somebody watch this movie and not be entertained at least in a passive sense watching this movie because i think this movie has an infectious energy because of all those things and especially with Iman Vellani and how this does flow off of Miss Marvel extremely well and bringing the family into this movie as well and the humor in this movie actually working extremely well better than a lot of Marvel movies in recent memory I just think this is just a really fun and entertaining film that's I just I just really enjoyed. I love seeing Kamala Khan meet Carol Danvers for the first time and the fact that she's been fantasizing about how she's going to meet her hero throughout the entirety of her own show and through the beginning of this movie and when they're all switching places for the first time in this film you get to see how she can't seem to be in the same room with her at the same time because they're swapping places but she's so excited at the idea that Captain Marvel walked through her living room in general and when she does finally meet her face to face and they have that conversation how awkward Mon Vellani is in those sequences that just feel very genuine and very relatable I just that was really fun to see and I've been saying this for ever since they announced this movie having the connection between Miss Marvel and WandaVision, that bringing these three actors together was really going to liven up the performances of this movie. And I think Brie Larson was really good in this film as this character. And, you know, I do think the first movie did suffer from the amnesia storyline. I don't really like amnesia storylines too much in movies in general, but that film kind of left her at the beginning of the movie feeling very stoic and very, I guess... I hate using the word bland, but she was a little bit bland at the beginning of the movie, but that was by design because her arc in that film kind of made her find herself by the ending of the film, and I did like her in that role by the ending of that film, but not having the baggage of that origin story and that amnesia storyline lets her really let loose in this film and putting her together with two co-leads essentially in this film that she can play off of in very fun ways. I thought that all worked really well. I also thought this movie picked up Monica Rambeau's story pretty well from WandaVision with that moment in WandaVision of her hearing Captain Marvel's name and kind of rejecting the idea of having her in her life again because she disappeared for 30 entire years saying that she was going to be back in a blink of an eye and she never came back and to see that Carol Danvers was 
kind of pushing her, her away because she didn't want her to see the version that she has become because she caused all this pain for the Kree by destroying the supreme intelligence. She caused this planet to be dying. She's seen as the annihilator for a reason. She didn't want her, I guess, this little girl who looked up to her to see the person that caused all of this pain. And so I do think that the characterizations between these three actresses were really well done. I think the moments that this movie gave them to kind of sit together in a room and talk about all these things worked really well. I think that one scene where they put on that like little headband thing that let you see your memories in the past and they were sharing those memories. I thought that scene was excellent. I thought that set up their conflicts really well in this moment. And I think that the scene in like the field did the best it can to kind of resolve all those arcs, but it felt a little bit too rushed by that point in the movie. I wish we got one or two more scenes of them just kind of existing together and talking about those things instead of just having fun in the action sequences and kind of making fun of each other as they do throughout this movie, especially when it comes to the singing planet, which I'll get to in a second here but just overall I do think that the characterizations between these three actors and again the chemistry which is so strong that it just made me have a smile on my face throughout the entire runtime. But let's get into the villainous side of things with Zawi Ashton playing Dar Ben and I think that her motivations in this movie were actually pretty solid. I've heard a lot of people saying that she was an underwhelming villain in this film which I'll get into where they go with this character uh, in a second here, but I think her motivations are actually pretty solid. I think the idea that her planet is dying, all she wants is essentially to save her species from extinction is a good motivation. I think the fact that Carol Danvers has kind of started this whole thing by destroying the Supreme Intelligence was a good way to tie her into this storyline to make it personal for this villainous character. And I think that her going to all the planets that I guess Carol Danvers has a connection to in some sort of way to steal their resources to take it back because her planet is essentially stolen by Captain Marvel I also think that was also a good idea here and I do think that there are some choices that this actress makes and maybe the director makes for her performances a bit odd I think that she plays it a little bit over the top in some ways I think some of the facial expressions are an interesting choice for sure by this actress I didn't necessarily dislike it I just thought it was a very distinct character choice that I don't think always worked in this film but overall I do think that her motivations were sound I think the problem with her character was the fact that she just kind of dies at the end. You got a couple great fights with her. And I do think the action sequences, especially the one on the water planets with the singing planets, was actually a pretty good fight. And I do think the one at the end was a good fight, although she did just get absolutely destroyed by these three characters were just absolutely tossing her around the room. And she didn't necessarily feel like a massive threat anymore by the ending of this film. And when the rubble falls on her and she gets stabbed and she, you know, almost makes a deal with Captain Marvel to have her, you know, reignite her son, but she decides not to do that. And she decides to threaten Mala at the end of this film and steal her bangle because she also does have the secondary bangle that was kind of hinted at in Miss Marvel and you get to see you know her have the power of all these things and she flies up in the air and then she just dies. I did find that to be underwhelming because you know I've been waiting for the second bangle to show up ever since Miss Marvel kind of hinted at this greater idea the greater history between these two things and you know having them be the quantum bands from the comics I do think was an interesting idea but having them both was too much power that she just kind of exploded and the consequences of her exploding that moment ripped a hole in space and time and it opened a portal to a different reality which I'll get into that as well by the end of this video but I don't know I just think that the fact that she gets wiped out in that way and she never feels fully threatening by the end of it even though she felt like a, a, an imposing threat throughout the first half of this movie especially when her first attack on the scroll planet or I guess the the scrolls being refugees on this one planet and it being destroyed and all these other Kree or all these other scrolls being killed in the rubble and it all collapsing and Captain Marvel making the choice to kind of flee and save who they can and try to instead of trying to save everybody honestly I thought that set the stakes pretty high at the beginning of this movie and it just doesn't ever get to that point again by the ending of the film but that also sparks another annoyance that I had with this film with the fact that secret invasion even exists in the first place because Talos is not in this film because Talos was killed unceremoniously in secret invasion spoilers for secret invasion because that show is not worth watching really I think it started off strong but then it really just did falter and the fact that you know, even if you had the idea that, you know, Talos' family and Talos was brought to maybe this other planet when Captain Marvel went zooming off at the end of the first film to try to find them a home instead of them staying on Earth and having that whole storyline, if it was, you know, Talos as the character in this other planet, I do think that that moment, even though I did say that it did have impact and it did set the stakes pretty high if it was Talos as a leader and and Gaia and all these other characters that's you know we were trying to set up for a secret invasion type of storyline had to deal with that sort of thing and they see that even Captain Marvel failed at finding them a home Nick Fury failed at trying to find them a home and they are just 
in a, in a point where they're kind of desperate enough to you know turn to the villains that they were said to be in the first Captain Marvel movie. I think that would have been a better way to kind of set up a secret invasion type of storyline with these characters. But unfortunately, we already did waste the secret invasion storyline with that show and Talos is now gone, which is so frustrating to me that he was not in this movie because he did bring a lot of light into that first Captain Marvel movie. But I guess that's just okay. But even if the stakes could have been higher in that moment, that was still the highest the stakes ever got in this film because once they got to the singing planet, which I actually really, really did enjoy. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I think a lot of people are going to hate that sequence. And I think those of you who are looking at that sequence and hating it because it's really dumb, I think you're taking it a bit too seriously. It's supposed to be goofy and silly as hell because it was extremely goofy. And I love, honestly, it's all worth it because of that one line saying that the leader of this planet is bilingual and that's why he can talk normally and also sing thing that is an extremely funny joke i really did laugh at that one quite a bit but honestly i thought it was a lot of fun to see carol in this manner being embarrassed to be you know singing and dancing as she is in this film in front of her newfound team it was just it was just a fun sequence but i think the place where the stakes felt the least high in this entire movie was unfortunately the stuff happening on saber with nick fury and i do think that this stuff started off pretty strong i love the fact that kamala's family get to kind of go on this adventure in a sort of way them going up into space and doing that little video call was really funny and entertaining sequence and honestly the banter with the family has always been great i love seeing them on screen but once you get up to saber and the rift shows up outside of the saber station and the whole thing starts you know falling apart but before that nick fury and the team start finding these random eggs everywhere on saber and it turns out to be all the florkin eggs that are all hatching and there's a bunch of cats running around this entire saber station it's not that i didn't enjoy the florkin actually i really did like the sequence where the florkin were essentially trying to eat all the crew of the saber station in order to fit them all on the skate pods because they were smaller to fit that way that was honestly extremely extremely funny i thought that was one of the funniest jokes in the entire movie seeing miss marvel carrying a cat holding it up to all these people in saber telling them to get in the cat to let yourself be eaten by the cat that was extremely funny but the stakes here do not feel as high especially at the beginning when you know the the marvels are off doing their thing on the water planet and nick fury is just kind of there looking at eggs wondering what they are and at first i was like what what are we doing here but then it'll be the florkin and it'll be important to get all the crew to safety so i'm kind of hit or miss on that because it was so extremely goofy and hilarious seeing them run around being eaten by cats but at the same time i didn't feel the stakes there whatsoever but of course this all leads to the end of the film which i did talk about the final confrontation between the villain of this film darben trying to take the energy of the sun before the marvels come and stop her pretty easily before she just explodes but then she blows a rip through space space and time which you know this is a thing that's kind of happens out of nowhere for me maybe there was a line earlier in the film that kind of set up that this was a possibility not just to open a rift like a, a one of those jump points from one point in the same universe to another point in the same universe but to blow a rift through space and time to a different dimension entirely i maybe there was a line earlier in the film that could have set that up it's like Chekhov's gun when you have a screenplay and you have a gun show up in the first act that gun is going to have to fire by the last act of the movie to have that kind of have a point but this seems to have the gun fire but you never introduced that there's a gun in the first place and so it felt kind of out of nowhere but at the same time it added some stakes and kind of made me perk up in my seat immediately saying oh that's a portal to a different universe and and you know monica says she, she has to go over to the other side of it she gets fully powered up by miss marvel and captain marvel kind of blasting her with all this energy and you know she flies out there and she has to steal it from the other side and i was thinking oh she's stealing it from the other side she's going to be trapped there and, and captain marvel realizes that's just too late with you know captain rambo sealing up that rift through space and time and being trapped on the other side of it and honestly i thought that was pretty impactful with how they handled that entire sequence with captain marvel now moving in to monica rambo's house hoping that one day she will return to her own universe but having that kind of idea and having that consequence essentially of the events of this film leaving one of our three characters gone entirely and Honestly, I do like that quite a bit, even though it did seem like it came out of nowhere just a little bit. But the post credit scene does tie into the scene where Monica Rambo went. And you get to see her react to seeing her mother sitting next to her on the side of this hospital bed. And she freaks out. All this flood of emotion just reaches a peak because of how she missed her mother's death. And seeing her in this moment was extremely emotional for her. But then she realizes once again that she trapped herself in a different universe. And that it's actually not her mother. This other character from the Marvel comics, which I don't know this character that, she, that Maria Rambo is 
is playing in this role in this X-Men universe, essentially, because you get to see Beast walk into the room. You get to see the X-Men mansion, essentially, the setup that is exactly like it was in the Fox universe, kind of teeing up this character to be essentially in Deadpool 3, which is extremely exciting to see that is kind of being teed up because that movie is so close to being released and it is extremely excited to see the X-Men come into this world in this sort of way and, and them kind of teasing the idea that we are going to get the Deadpool kills the X-Men universe, the Fox universe in that movie, which is just such a hilarious concept. But to have this incursion event kind of teed up by this movie was something that was pretty unexpected for me. But I think with all the complaints of Marvel Phase 4 and Phase 5 and how it kind of feels loosely, very, very loosely connected to this whole idea of a multiverse saga, I think that this film actually handles it extremely well because the Infinity Saga, what it did so well is, you know, you would have a contained film that was character based, that was fun and entertaining on its own right. And then at the end of the film, you realize that, oh, this this little object was an Infinity Stone and it ties into the timeline of where this Infinity Stone was at any given point in the Marvel timeline. And you get to see how these things all flow together to the Infinity War and Endgame kind of wrapping all that stuff up. And I think that the idea of having this contained story and leaving off with a character being trapped in a different universe and causing an incursion event is how you set that thing up because you have a contained story for the most part, but then by the end of it, you have a tease for the multiverse and the potential of the ramifications of a multiverse and an incursion event at the ending of this film. And I think that is what has been missing from a lot of these other films in the phase four, phase five era. But overall, I really did enjoy my time watching this movie. Like I said, the three leads really did carry this movie for me and them swapping places and the action sequences and need to cost direction was very strong in this movie to make me entertained throughout the entire runtime, despite having a weaker villain by the end of it, despite having an intriguing setup, an intriguing backstory for this character. And I do think that some of the more offshoot moments of this movie, like the musical sequence that I actually did enjoy because I didn't take it too seriously. And it was just a really fun time with a lot of great humor and the Florican thing, even though that whole storyline on Saber felt very dis disjointed from the rest of the story. But you know, the cats eating the crew was so funny. So even in the moments that I didn't really care for as much in this movie had at least one thing in it that made me laugh enough to warrant its existence in this movie that made me enjoy watching this. So there's no point in this movie that I just thought I was rolling my eyes at the back of my head saying that this is some of the worst of the MCU like some other people are saying about this film. I just had fun watching this movie and I think that if you go into this movie with the mindset of just going into a fun movie that has a lot of great action sequences that have a lot of great intriguing ideas that tee up some future MCU movies, I think you're going to have fun with this movie. But again, if you go in with the mindset of thinking that this movie is going to be garbage right from the beginning, obviously you're not going to like the movie. But that is going to be it for my review for the Marvels. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on this film as well. Only if you have seen the movie, definitely comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like, and your overall thoughts on this film. I also have my review up for the Loki Season 2 finale, which I absolutely loved, so you can also see that here on the channel. So if you did enjoy this review, make sure you guys leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well to see more reviews just like this one. So thanks everybody for watching, and I hope to see you all in my next one.